Good morning. Thank you for being with us. We welcome you to come on in and get comfortable here with us at Unity of Walnut Creek. We've got a powerful, exciting thing we're working on today. One of those contributions to the healing of the consciousness of humanity that's so important to us. We have wonderful music and I invite you to let this time be that invitation to your heart to touch the magnificence and the beauty of the spiritual being that you are. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please join us in singing One in the Spirit. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the light. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the light. We will of Walnut Creek. Would you join me in acknowledging our wonderful additional song leader, Mary Gesset, and our performing artist for this morning, Mitch Monroe, backed up as usual by our phenomenal house band, Fusion. Also, if you're willing, join me in the 
and saying hello to our online friends. And turn to the camera. Hey, it is so delightful having you as a part of our service. We thank you and we pray that you will come again and again. Having just been, oh, and my name is Sheila Gautreau, and I'm one of your ministers here. But having just been at Unity Village for nine, nine days, I am more aware than ever of the power of the energy and the teachings of this unity movement. And having had the opportunity to spend time at Silent Unity, sitting with one of the associates and taking part in the prayers as they come in from all over the world, I am more aware than ever that we definitely are a positive path for spiritual living and that prayer serves as the strong foundation of all that we teach and all that we share with each other and with the world. And I know that we are making a difference from all that I felt and experienced there. And so would you join me in sharing that amazing experience of affirmative prayer that sets the foundation for our service and for our unity movement and our ministry here by saying with me our opening prayer statement. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let us take that in. Feel it at the very depths of our being. And again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let us take it in even, even deeper, allowing it to expand outwardly touching each other in this room and touching every heart that beats throughout our planet. And once more, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's hold it within our hearts. Let it permeate our thoughts and allow it to be our expression as we move through our lives day to day. This we know to be true, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Please remain seated and join Mary and me in singing Sweep Over My Soul. Thank you. 
Thank you. The time to journey into that experience of prayer and meditation together, one of those beautiful things that we get to share here when we come together or when you join us online and we move in to touch that divine presence consciously. So I invite you to take that deep breath through your heart, move your awareness towards that very center of your heart, and let the music be part of that beautiful invitation to the very center of your heart. Feel free to join in. Father God, infinite love. So beautiful to hear that which has been called the very sound of creation itself. As we awaken to know your presence more deeply, more powerfully in every moment of our lives. In this moment, I breathe in this awareness, knowing that it is you who breathe me and you are my breath. As I awoke this morning, you invited me into a day as radiant life and light and awareness. And you are that in me which is awake and aware. As I walk through every decision and question, each moment of my day, you are the light upon my path that where I step might be holy ground. That what is created through my thought, through my choice, through my feeling, might be an expression of ever greater goodness, your presence flowing through me. As I remember those moments when I have been in worry or anxiety, feeling tension, fear, you are that strength that is there enfolding me, embracing me, holding me in infinite compassion as I heal and awaken to know that your strength guides me, that your goodness calls forth only greater goodness into my life. And I am grateful. And you are the gratefulness in me. I am grateful to awaken ever more deeply to see you in all of life, to feel your presence each moment, to hear your voice through life's song. And so I now enter into this place of stillness, this sacred place of being open to being one with the one. And so I follow that beautiful direction given by the psalmist. Be still and know that I am God. Be still 
and know that I am God. <coughs> Be still and know. Other Father God, infinite love, beloved presence, is you who fills the stillness. You who calls us into wholeness, and you are the wholeness that we are. And you are the love that flows with such power through our hearts. And we take this beautiful power of choice that is ours. And we choose to send this love for we know that its touch upon another brings healing, brings harmony and wholeness and blessing. And so we radiate this love from our hearts. We send it first to our own bodies for healing and balance, calling forth a wholeness in every cell and system. We radiate this love to mind and heart, calling forth wisdom and understanding. And beloved presence, we send this love to each one who is dear to us. We enfold each one knowing that they are lifted, healed, guided, prospered, blessed and that they find deep and beautiful peace within. We send this love across the spiritual community, becoming a part of that blessing within each individual and for everyone in their world. And gratefully, we receive every prayer request, knowing with each one you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. And this beautiful love flows through our hearts. It goes out from this simple place as waves of blessing across the communities in which we live. It goes across our nation and beyond the boundaries to touch all the peoples of the world to call forth within us all peace, wisdom. And so this love flows through our hearts. And we send it to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we send this beautiful love from our hearts. It flows and touches and enfolds this beautiful earth. It brings balance to all her system, bringing sun and warm to places of cold and dark and bringing rain to places of dryness. It brings blessing to her creatures. And we send this love about the earth that it might touch the heart 
of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Feeling that love, enjoying that love once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And it is so here in peace and joy. Amen. When I hear them say, Let them go their way to that living. I won't ever stray. Cause this is heaven to me. Wherever freedom grows. Seek it if it's yes or no. It's me who'll seek it, cause the Lord He knows that this is heaven to me. If you got your got your feet sing your song all through the street you raise your head when day is done shout it out unto the sun so when I hear them sing Better living, let them go their way to that new living. I won't ever stray, cause this is heaven to me. Cause this is Jennifer Hooker, and it's my pleasure to highlight a few of the many upcoming events here at Unity of Walnut Creek. Today at 2 o'clock, please join <laughs> Reverend Sheila for a one-hour introduction of Radical Forgiveness and have a first-hand experience of one of these powerful tools. Next Sunday afternoon, Rita Marie Johnson invites you to join her to launch her book, Completely Connected, and kick off her nationwide book tour. Launch parties around the country will join in the celebration. And Rita Marie will also be our guest speaker at the 9.30 and 11.30 services. Bring your family and friends to join in our spiritual family for our Good Friday and beautiful Easter services. 
These services of great joy express the fullness of our hearts and the beauty we find within all of life. In response to recent tragic global, national, and local events, and their profound impact on our own Muslim community, the Interfaith Council of Contra Costa County, the Interfaith Council of San Ramon Valley, and the Interfaith Partnership of Neighbor to Neighbor are sponsoring an area-wide program this Friday, and there are details of that event in your bulletin. And the connection class for today has been canceled, and I'd like to invite Reverend David to the platform. <sighs> this is so much fun because we have here at Unity the most amazing set of teachers. We are really blessed. We have so many people with deep and powerful knowledge and experience to support us all on our journey. And so I want to share with you the, the new set of classes starts this week. And on Mondays is the transitions, the wilderness experience with Sheila. Now, I know no one's here going through transitions. <laughs> but if you are, there's, what she's working with is such powerful and meaningful uh, material in, in experiencing that part of life. Tremendous opportunity. And then on Tuesdays, um, Jeannie and I will be teaching the spiritual principles of abundance. Now, this is one of those things where, yes, we're going to study that amazing understanding of how the divine is really nurturing and supporting and flows into our life, but we're going to do more than that. We're actually going to accomplish those things that we're working with. So this is a deeply experiential, very powerful it, uh, course and it has changed a lot of lives. So if, uh, if you're open to a little more, a little better, with a little more fun with it, come, to the, come join us. And then uh, Garrett on um, Tuesday is also doing the Positive Psychology of A Course in Miracles. Uh, Garrett did his workshop uh, last uh, weekend uh, introducing that material so, uh, to us. Wonderful work. And then, well, you heard Sheila talking about the beautiful prayer in which unity is grounded, and we have our licensed unity teacher, Ron Salazar, teaching why prayer is so cool. <laughs> I've never heard it described that way before, but he's right. It's really great. And then on uh, Thursdays is our course in, in support of relationships, uh, conscious Loving with Kathleen Sims. So marvelous things. There's only one that you have to jiggle a little to actually be in two places at once. But other than that, we can attend them all. See you there. And to find out details of these and other wonderful activities here at Unity of Walnut Creek, please consult your bulletin and or the website. And until you hear the gong, please enjoy taking a short moment to greet the people immediately around you. Hello. Oh, it
So I'm going to ask Sheila to stay up here with me for just a moment. Uh, Sheila shared that she just returned from Unity Village. Uh, some of us know that uh, she was a licensed Unity teacher, and she also has the credential of being an interfaith minister, but not a Unity minister, so we haven't been calling her Reverend, okay? And the other day, Sheila was licensed as a Unity minister, and she is on her way in a few years. She will be fully ordained. So Reverend Sheila, welcome. <laughs> it's quite a journey, and we're proud of you. Oh 
Well, I think you sketched out our journey, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So I, I am so very excited because, as I shared with you last week, we've got a spiritual assignment. We're on our way for really healing some of that past relationship pain and things that we carry because we're really invited into a state of freedom of being free to let the beautiful, magnificent, spiritual beings that we each are shine. And so on that journey, last week we looked at uh, some of the steps to take and to guide us through it, to kind of give us something to follow that journey to healing. We've been working with beauty and the beast because the symbols there are so powerful and understanding. And what we know we're moving into is a change of perception, the ability to see the fullness and the goodness of life everywhere in every moment, including feel its goodness and love in every moment in our lives. That's quite a journey. Now, the change of perception is kind of an interesting thing. You know, we have our ways of looking at something, and then suddenly we're looking at it different. I was uh, going out of the house today, and I, I looked at the mirror and uh, saw that, okay, you know, the, the suit was doing fine. Catherine had given me a new shirt, and I put that on. And, um, and then I walked past the mirror, and I looked back, and I thought, I'm going in front of a group of metaphysicians. Now, metaphysicians always look for deeper symbology in what they hear. I figured we had five minutes into the service before someone turned to their neighbor and said, what do you think it means that the minister is wearing 50 shades of gray? <laughs> and I thought, maybe I don't want to get into that perception, okay? So, <laughs> so let's go into Beauty and the Beast. I think it's easier. <laughs> Do you remember, remember where our story started? There was, the, uh, there was the merchant. Okay, and the merchant is that part of us that's, that's this growing being. And the merchant is that part of us that has really been working in the third dimensional world. You know, buying and selling the things. The perception of life. That we get what we need from out there. And the merchant is lost in a storm and comes into a beautiful place. A place where there's sunshine and beauty and it is the grounds of a beautiful castle. And in that castle, everything is provided. In other words, as we spiritually awaken, which is what this is about, we experience a change of perception. We begin to experience the abundance of the divine flowing in through and taking care of our lives. Every, every need that he has, wonderful food is provided, the, the rest that he needs. And yet, as he's about to leave, he plucks a rose to take to his daughter beauty. And suddenly a hideous beast appears. Okay, now in the, in the castle image is the same as Jesus' kingdom of heaven. It's a state of consciousness in which we are aware of the divine presence. Now this is, this is an immature state, okay, because we're aware of the care. We can sense that. We can sense the gifts, but not aware of the provider. Okay, so it's an early state in our spiritual awakening. Now... The beast, just as every part of the story is, the beast is a part of us. The beast is the part of us that is ugly and hideous. The pain that we carry, that is our beast. And we each have it in different ways, from different experiences. And part of the story of beauty and the beast is how do we go about moving to where there is not the experience of the pain, the ugliness, 
Rather, what we experience is wholeness. That's the journey. And it was triggered by the merchant picking the rose, because a rose is a symbol of understanding. And once we make that commitment to grow in understanding, life changes, or in the terms of the story, the merchant's life is forfeit, unless beauty comes and is there in the castle. So when the merchant goes home, beauty says, yes, I will go and do that. And so we then have a very powerful symbol of beauty entering the castle grounds. Now, beauty is the feeling part of the self. Okay, our soul has many different aspects and dimensions in its nature. And part of that is the ability to feel and, and sense. Okay, and that's what beauty is the, the picture of. And, and that's part of because the, the female image in, the, in stories is the feeling part of the self. The male image is, is like that thinking or idea part of the self. And so here we have the intentional entering into this experience of growth, this experience of greater perception. In our work, what we talked about was that this is the symbol of entering into the heart. In the heart, we have the spiritual connection and power to deal with that which is before us, to heal that behind us. Okay. So we, we used the experience of breathing, the feeling of ease, to take us into our castle grounds. Breathing, the feeling of ease. Suggesting that when our memories, when our beast came up, when those painful things came to our awareness or began to impact us, the first step was entering that castle grounds, breathing the feeling of ease, which takes us into our heart. And then the assignment that beauty has. Beauty is asked to, every evening, be present for the beast, to be present and dine with the beast at dinner. Now that's difficult for her at first because of the ugliness of the beast. And it's difficult for us at first because of the ugliness of the pain that we carry. And we avoid it. But part of the willingness to grow spiritually, to say, yes, I'm, I'm going to take that rose, is to say, I will show up. And the, and the way that we talked about doing that is to simply take that pain and hold it in the heart so we are present with it. Hold it. Now, you can't hold it in your head. If you, go in your, if you hold it in your head, you'll know it because you'll immediately start going into blame and explaining about that person and how wrong they are. And you can do that quite thrillingly and with a great deal of energy and drama. <laughs> but it's not healing. But we can hold it in our heart. Once we breathe at ease, bring it into the heart, and simply hold it there. Not judging it, it's not good or bad, not right or wrong. But letting it be there where this which connects us with this divine power flows in and through us. And then today, we get to look at what is such a beautiful and powerful spiritual experience. The healing of that pain. In our story, we see the healing grow as beauty shows up each evening. Now, what, what happens is she begins to see the beast differently. He's still ugly and hideous. She, she, that doesn't change for her. But she begins to see that there are other qualities there, other things that are growing and, and unfolding. She sees a, a nobility, a kindness, a wisdom as she is there present. Just as we, as we're present, begin to find that spirit begins to open our perception. 
and we begin to understand more than what we knew before. And then beauty says to the beast that she wants to go home. She says, now just, just for a little while, she wants to connect back in with her family, let them know she's all right, experience her sisters and brothers. And, and, uh, and she only went, asked to go for two months, just a little while, and then she'll come back and be there with him. Now he says to her, beauty, if you go and you don't come back, I will die. But I cannot refuse you, so I let you go. So she goes home. Okay. Now, there, there in the experience of being home, she gets involved with all the wonderful things that are happening in her family and in her world. And it's wonderful, she enjoys it, and she completely forgets about the beast and the commitment. And so the time passes. And then one night, in her sleep, she has a dream. And in the dream, she's searching the castle grounds. She's looking for the beast and finally finds him, and he appears to be dead. And in anguish, she awakens and remembers her commitment and takes the steps then to return to the castle ground. And she's there, and just as in her dream, she's searching the ground. And finally, she finds him. And he appears to be dead. And she takes him in her arms and embraces him. And the tears of love and compassion flow and touch her. Touch him. And as those tears touch his being, that which is ugly disappears. Life returns, and the one in her arms is not a beast, but a prince, the one whose castle this is. Now, the truth is, we all want to go home. <laughs> okay, when you got that spiritual assignment, we began working this, with these things at some point in our lives. We worked with them as best we could. Okay, and then we went on. Young man, his name is Arthur. And Arthur uh, met a young woman. They fell madly in love. Her name is uh, Marina. And so Arthur and Marina had several very wonderful years together. They were inseparable, a deep connection, great love between them. And he got drafted to go to Vietnam. Uh, there was a while still while he was stateside, and then he had to leave. And what really took care of Arthur in that very difficult experience? was her love. The letters would come, they were, they were talking about their wedding and what they would do and the dreams that they had for the future and there, there was this hope, there was this connection, there was this meaning in his life in that place of great pain. And then the letters began to become a little less frequent. And he realized, we're, we're, uh, we're a part we need to connect again. So after six months, he had his R&R &R time. He was able to go to uh, Hawaii, where he sent her a plane ticket to come join him. And he was there at the airport, and it was his sister, not Marina, that stepped off the plane and had to tell him she wasn't able to come. And so he called her. And when he called... She answered thinking it was the person who was now her lover and spoke of how wonderful it had been. And then she realized she was talking with Arthur. 
Great pain. Now Arthur shares that his way of dealing with that pain was through drugs and alcohol and unfulfilling relationships until he finally came to a point where his life wasn't working and he had to, had to face and begin that journey of facing what had taken place, what he carried within him and put his life back together. And he did. He put it together beautifully. Met a wonderful woman, married. He described his, their, their life together as really happily married for 40 years. And then Marina showed up. Now Marina was at the point where she was looking at some things in her life. And one of the things she realized was she had made some very poor choices. And in their time together, that had hurt him very deeply. So she was trying to take responsibility for those and sat and, and told him that she was aware of that and that she was sorry and asked for forgiveness. And Arthur says, initially I was angry that Maria awakened my dormant memories because I was soon reliving the heartache all over again. Arthur had to go back to the castle. It wasn't healed. Now it's not that he hadn't put his life together in a wonderful way. He had. But our assignment is not excellent coping skills. Our assignment is wholeness. That's what the soul desires. And so we get called back to the castle to do that work. And some of it's quite painful. She finds the beast dying and realizes the quality of what has unfolded of that being in spite of its appearance. Now I think for Arthur also it was compassion because he says when she asked for forgiveness it became difficult to go back into the blame that we do. And that means our head doesn't have much answers for us. And so, in the compassion for his own pain, remember now this, he'd been able to step back. There'd been a change in time. And what happens as we're there at the table with the beast each evening, as we go home and step into a world where we address other things, and then we step back in to say, now is my time for wholeness. And that greater awareness that had grown in him took him to the realization that Marina played a significant role in my life during a period that helped define who I am today. Now whenever I remember those days, I can do it with a smile. Such a simple picture of freedom. Not pain. Wholeness. I can do it with a smile. Remember the experience of Karen that I, from last week and her moving after six years of being divorced in with her ex-husband so her children could experience the last months with him because he was in a terminal cancer situation. And how the pain that she had experienced was brought up again. And her self-compassion, as she saw her pain and chose 
to really respond and take care of her needs. And in that, the ability that spirit moves in and through us so that we begin to perceive differently. She began to see the difference between his actions. I understand them. They were driven by anger from great fear with him. And she could see that was completely different from what she could choose to feel. And as that happened, her words, I created space in my heart for I planted the seeds of empathy and compassion. And so as she went into compassion, she shared that what, what happens those last times where she was able to get free of her pain and eventually, as he was close to releasing life, look at him and tell him that she loved him. She says, I did love him, not as my husband, but as the father of my children. I loved him for just being a human being, a child of God. Forgiveness had given me the ability to stop judging him and accept him for who he was. I was finally at peace with our past. It was time to go let go of our history so we could both move on. A warm glow washed over me, filled with grace and forgiveness. Forgiveness is the result of our healing. Yes. It doesn't cause the healing. It's our healing that causes forgiveness. Okay, Then we are able to let go. And the healing comes from our compassion for ourselves. Now, you've done compassion for yourself. You have embraced again and again that place of pain. Hey, remember when you had a little child run into your lap crying and hurt and you embraced it in your compassion? That's what we're talking about. That beautiful compassion. You watched right there as that compassion began to heal their hurt and pain. And they began to connect again with who they were. And sometimes, they even got enough to that forgiveness place, they'd go out and play with the other kid again. Remember when you were held. When you were hurting. And you let that compassion enfold you. Let's let that divine compassion enfold. Us. I unfold, I embrace with compassion my pain. Okay, I embrace my pain with compassion. That's what we're doing, that's the assignment. I embrace my pain with compassion. That's what heals us. That is the power of God flowing in and through us. It's an interesting thing when we turn to the scriptures. And of course, in the Bible, it's very simple. God is love. Now, compassion is one of the most powerful forms of love. So compassion is God. In the Quran, Allah, the compassionate. Now, our wonderful Muslim scholar that has worked with us sometimes here explaining, explained there's really a little mistranslation there. It is actually understood Allah is compassion. In other words, our compassion is the divine expressing in us and through us. And of course, the beautiful focus on compassion and its power out of the Buddhist tradition. It's universal. This is how we heal. I embrace my pain with compassion just as sleeping beauty. Or, nope, that's the other one. Just as beauty. Just beauty. <laughs> Embraced the beast with her compassion. And that flow of spiritual energy, the tears, of compassion healed the ugliness. Now in the story, it was a curse. 
that was there, that was released by the power of that love itself. Okay. And the curse that we carry is that growing through the third dimensional world, we perceive dualistically. Good and bad, right and wrong, God, devil, all that sort of stuff. And our invitation is to step into where we know only love. Because that is the true reality. Within ourselves, our pain is caught in duality. Our healing is the power that lets us experience our own wholeness so that there is within our experience of life pure love. I embrace my pain with compassion. I am free, because that's where we're going. Okay. Join me. I embrace my pain with compassion. I am free. That freedom feels pretty good. Again, I embrace my pain with compassion. I am free, just like beauty. Embracing that beast with the compassion and love of her heart. Once again, I embrace my pain with compassion. I am free. That experience of freedom is an amazing thing. Now, we've all hit it before. I know we have. And what is happening is the world needs to step into freedom. It needs our healing energy by first healing ourselves so that powerful spiritual energy can flow through us. So we can live in that world of that one presence, that infinite divine love, or as they say in the fairy tale, happily ever after. Bless you. Heart ministers are available after the service today to offer prayer support for challenges or celebrations. And you may see them in the sanctuary, on the patio, on the grounds, and they are the ones wearing the lavender stoles. And at any time, you can submit a prayer request from our website. I ask everyone to please take a connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. And we invite each of you to take a moment to fill out this card if you have a prayer request, question, or a comment. And if you're new to Unity, we'd love to have you fill out the card and come see us at the welcome table on the patio after the service, and we'd enjoy getting to know you better. Our spiritual focus this week is, I, I embrace, embrace my, my pain, pain with, with compassion, compassion, and I, I am free. And the ushers will receive your card with the offering toward the end of the music. It's time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes on the clipboards in the seat pockets in front of you. And for those of you watching online, just click on the donate button on our Watch Live page. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. He said, poverty or prosperity, it all depends on you. All that the Father has is yours, but you alone are responsible for the relationship of the Father's good to your life. Through conscious recognition of your oneness with the Father and his abundance, you draw the living substance into visible supply. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all your good. Please join me with our affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
wake up, wake up, the sun cannot wait for long. Reach out, reach out before it fades away. If you surrender, smile into the fear and feel the pain. You want to run away, run away, but you say that it can't be so. You want to look away, look away, but you stay because it's all so close. When you stand up and hold out your hand In a place that I can't understand My reason to be brave Hold on, hold on so strong Time just carries on all that you thought was wrong is pure again And you can face the storm if you surrender Smile into the fear and feel the rain You want to run away, run away, but you say that it can't be so you want to look away, look away, but you stay cause it's all so close When you stand up and hold out your hand In a place that I can't understand My reason to be brave Hold on, 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 hold on. You want to run, you want to run away, run away, but you say that it can't be. You want to look away, look away, but you stay cause it's all so close When you stand up and hold out your hand In a place that I can't understand My reason to be brave So our children won't be coming in. We have very creative teachers, and I learned that they are holding a memorial service for a dead bird. <laughs> so <laughs> I invite everybody to stand and take hands, and let's share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song.
are the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun.